Happy first day of fall, YouTube fam. Micah here shooting another high adventure video right here on the beautiful Boise River. I wanted to share with you today my most favoritest bait of all time to catch trout on. Now, this isn't a lure. I'm actually gonna go hunt for this bait, but I, in my opinion, this is far and away the best bait that you can use for catching trout out of any river. If you've watched my channel a lot, you know where I'm going with this, but it has to be crawdads. The water looks kind of dirty, but we'll see. Give it a go. Guys, I'm actually gonna dive in the water. I'm actually going to stock up on crawdads. I'm gonna go catch a bunch of crawdads and I'm gonna have them stocked up so I can fish with them as bait through the fall time. According to the weather, this is like one of the last halfway decent days. So I'm gonna dive in here. We gotta hunt for them, gotta get the crawdads. Let's get started. As mentioned before guys, the water is definitely a lot murkier. It's dropped about four inches and I've gone from about 10, 12 feet of visibility down to probably only about four feet of visibility. Fortunately though, good GoPro, still able to pick up some pretty sweet underwater footage. You can see it's really like um, uh, silty. It's almost like really silty in the water. Now check this out. I have never seen this before. A dead squirrel in the water. All I can think is that these crawdads hunted it down, probably trapped it on a log, and now they've talked among themselves. They've said, squirrel tastes good. We like squirrel. And so if I'm a squirrel, I'm worried because this is very concerning that crawdads are now hunting in packs, hunting in groups for squirrel. Uh, as you can see down there, just chilling on the bottom this time of year. Just picking them up like candy. Don't having to flip over many rocks. There's another one. This guy's a big old tubby. Only one claw. You'll see him here in a second. Look at that. There's definitely some good claw meat in there. Uh, I'll toss the claws aside and keep those to eat myself. But right now, as I mentioned, uh, I'm after the meat uh, in those tails. Look at this. More squirrels on the bottom. This is very concerning. This is very concerning because now these crawdads are actively hunting these these tribes of squirrels and I, I i just don't know what it means for the animal kingdom now um we're gonna see a big decrease in squirrel population along the river uh if this is going to be a trend anywho more crawdads and all the junk muck and mire i think they're trying to feed on whatever's left over before it gets too cold because as i mentioned earlier it was only about 75 degrees when i popped in the water today and uh getting colder so now i move into a little bit shallower water and i start lifting over these rocks you can see super silty but now i'm starting to find some under the rocks where you'd normally find crawdads uh it seemed like the deeper you went uh they were just out and about but if you went up shallower you had to flip over rocks to find them uh, but they're still out so i was really fortunate to get some and i'm just i'm basically just catching a big old bag full not to eat necessarily but to um store away so i can use tail meat throughout the fall time i'm actually tickling some of these crawdads like that guy out right there i think he gets away maybe i'm able to get him but um i'm actually tickling these crawdads out yeah he slides under a rock with a stick and you've seen them do that like with lobster they call it actually a tickle stick and so I'm grabbing some of these sticks that are on the bottom, and I'm like that right there, and I'm just poking it behind the rock, and because that's a nice crawdad, that's a really good crawdad, and I'm just poking him out like that, getting him out of his hiding spot, and slowly slide my hand down, pinning him. Always good to have the extra gloves on for a little extra, um, basically like a little bit more of uh, armor for me because those crawdads have a pretty good pinch, especially that size. Look at that. There's some big old claws. That's probably about a five inch crawdad, five to six inch crawdad. There's another one right there. I've tickled him out of the hole. Like I said, when they're diving for a lobster, they call it a tickle stick. And um, uh, I'm just using a plain old stick to get them out. Uh, and there's another one. You can I can often find these crawdads by looking. See those little white areas on their claws? You can actually, uh, as you hunt for them more, that's what I look for, especially in dirty water like this. I look for those, that telltale white sign. Catching plenty of crawdads. Got enough. Let's go get to the river now. Fun fact, on this side of the bridge that I'm standing on, the trout have to be 14 inches long in order to keep them. But if you go just on the opposite side of the bridge, they can be any size. Don't know why that is. My guess is just for preservation purposes. Uh, seems kind of crazy, but um, there you have it. Those are the rules, so we follow them. All right, lost my last hook. 
to a tree limb. A feisty tree limb, though. He fought well. I've got four pound test line on, so I'm going super low profile or as low of profile as I feel comfortable with. Oh, there's a bite already. And um, so in that way, it just looks as natural as possible down there. It looks very unobtrusive. I've got a couple of little split shots, about a foot and a half up off from the, from the hook. And that little white piece of meat just stands out big time. It stands out a lot down there. I just toss it in and let it drift down. There's a bite. Got him. There we go. See, look at that. Bam. Second cast. If I were on the other side of the bridge, he'd be a keeper. <laughs> but because he's got to be 14 inches, he is not a keeper. Still a pretty fish though, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful trout. And I don't think he left me my bait. Unfortunately, hooked him right in the side of the mouth. Check that out. Pretty trout, probably about 12 inches, but I'm not a keeper on this side. Ooh. There we go, looking good. Oh, I'm telling you guys, that is just the first of many right there. Look at that. Just that little bright piece of bait, just drifting down all by itself. Super low profile. We're going to pull a few more out of this spot, I guarantee you. Then we're going to move down and into a spot that I've snorkeled before. I've seen some big trout down there. I try to keep my line fairly tight so I can try to feel like that right there. Got him. Another one. Another solid one. Not huge, but another pretty trout. Look at that. Look at that. It'd be a keeper on the other side of the bridge, dang it. And he did not leave me my bait, unfortunately. Another probably about 12 incher. We're just skinny trout. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go this way. No, 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 this way. There we go. Nice, guys. Trout number two. Two cows, two trout. I'm telling you guys, this crawdad is, in my opinion, the best bait. The best bait. Absolutely. 100%. Got him. Another one. Boom. They love that crawdad, guys. I'm telling you. They can't pass it up. Another would-be keeper if I were on the other side of the bridge. And he stole my bait. Pretty fish. Another probably close to 12-incher. There we go. No, you're running into my line. There we go. Let's move up into these headwaters a little bit. See if we can't maybe luck out on a bigger fish. Oh, got him. <laughs> Boom. Oh, he left my bait. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. Fish number four. Look at that. Guys, they love it. They love it. This is actually probably the smallest one, probably only about 10 inches. But they love this crawdad meat, man. I got him. Look at that. Okay, that's tiny. Oh, there goes my bait. No. That is a tiny fish. And there he goes. Dang it. And he took my bait. That was lame. Oh, I got one. It's a little bit better, kinda sorta. Here we go. Another one. Oh hey, keep that, keep that bait on there. Another keeper on the other side of the bridge. What is that? Five, six now? Good knit, guys. Get out of here. There you go. Skit scat. He's making his way out. There we go. I'm still searching for that bigger fish. Got him. Right there. Right there. <laughs> that is not the bigger fish we were after. 
Now there's another fish, and it is a pretty trout. I'll give him that, but not, these are not the trout we are looking for. I know there's some big ones down there. That's pretty. If you, uh, there we go. There he goes. Oh, got him. When I was reeling it in, he hit it. <laughs> Again, a keeper on the other side of the bridge, but here, nay nay. Oh, there he goes. Whew. Got him. Boom. Just floats right past him. They gobble it up. Just like that. <laughs> Not the giganto we're looking for, but pretty fish. Another one, what, like seven or eight now. I've lost count. I don't believe in surefire baits, but that's about as close as it gets to a surefire bait in my book. Crawdad tail meat. They just cannot pass it up. Another pretty trout. There you go. Got him. Another one right after that one. Another pretty trout. This one's pretty dark. This might be a native bow. Let me see, I can't tell if he'd settle down. No, I don't think so. Looks like a stocked fish to me. Another pretty fish. Another pretty trout. No, head, head out to sea. There we go. All right guys, that was pretty fun. I'm telling you guys, I don't believe in like surefire baits, but like that is about as surefire of a bait that I have ever used. And if you have crawdads in your area, you gotta give it a try. I'm excited to freeze some of these tails and see if they work just as good, you know, after I unthaw them as they do fresh right out of the river. Now though, let's move to the other side of that bridge where we can keep a few of these trout. Let's catch a few more and then let's do a little cooking. All right, we are on the other side of the bridge. We were just right over there. Now we're going to fish this body of water behind me. I have snorkeled this before in handline fish. I know there are some big trout in here. I know there are a lot of trout in here. So let's see if they're biting. They were biting on that side of the bridge. So hopefully there's no weird voodoo thing going on where that side of the bridge is great. This side isn't, but I'm using my crawdad, man. I think they're just gonna keep gobbling it up. Let's see. Got him. That's not what I'm after, but it is a fish. It is a baby trout. That's called this guy right here. Check that out. That's called sturgeon bait. <laughs> I'm gonna swim free, or is that too traumatic? Oh, no, I guess he's good. Gonna have to use more bait though. Oh, guys, that was a big fish. Oh my gosh, it just broke my line. That, <laughs> that is the kind of trout we were after. Um, but he just totally snapped the whole line. That is one of the unfortunate things about fishing with four pound test line around rock. It's gone, he gone. That's what we're after. I saw a glimpse of him and that looked like like a nice trout. I'm not saying five pound trout, but I'm saying like at least maybe a couple of pounds. I saw just uh, just a, a mere glimpse of it. It hit the surface and I, uh, the tug was definitely stronger than anything I've had so far today. I know there are more down there like that, but it just, I'm totally snapped off. We got to get tied up. Let's get back down there. Whew. There's a bite. Got him. Not big, but another one. Please, oh, he's taking off. Come on. Uh, I don't think he's gonna go free. Well, never mind. There he goes. I'm actually surprised that one shot off. He just, again, I'm not trying to gut hook these fish. They just, they gobble it up so fast. I literally cannot, uh, I can't set the hook fast enough in this current. Sometimes it's difficult to tell when exactly they hit because I'm bumping along rocks and stuff like that, fortunately. He left me my bait, but I can't always know exactly when they hit. It's not like a lure that it's just like, bam, and then oh, fish on. Got another one. Holy monkeys. There's a good jump. They're getting a little bigger, getting a little bigger. That's not a bad fish right there. We might keep that guy.
There he is. Oh, this is a better one. I mean, he's not huge, but it's a better trout. We'll keep him if we can get him in. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, woohoo, guys, yeah. Look at that, that's a pretty fish. That's a pretty trout, I'll bet he's about 13 inches or so. Look at that, just gobbled it down again. That is awesome. On that crawdad, look at that. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful fish. Got him. Not big. Whoa, there he is. It's a pretty trout though. Really pretty trout. Should go free. Oh, it, 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 there you go. Another pretty trout on that craw. They can't, can't deny it. Well guys, I am hungry. I am going to cook one of these fish up but it is undeniable. Crawdad might be the best bait out there for trout. I like it better than night crawlers. It just, it's meatier. I like the white color of it. I like the texture better. It stands out when I'm floating it down the river. I just, all around, I personally think it is the best bait for rainbow trout. So if you guys have access to crawdads and trout in your area, you have to give it a try. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. Now I have my little cooker set up behind me. Let's go ahead and clean and cook one of these trout because I'm hungry, man. I've caught a lot of eight and 10 inches today. I am starving. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. All right guys, today's recipe obviously starts out with a lot of butter. We're gonna melt this down and it's actually a pretty simple recipe. I'm gonna show you the ingredients we're using, uh, but it's probably one of my favorite. In fact, might be one of the best recipes to date uh, for cooking trout in my opinion. And you might be like, what? It is a simple recipe. I'm gonna show you guys the um, spices we're gonna use for this and it is absolutely thebomb.com. Our butter's melted down, let's throw our filet in there. All right, we go ahead and drop our trout in there, just like so. That's smelling delicious and fogging up my camera. Now we're gonna start with some salt, directly on the trout, a little bit of pepper as well. Then here is the pièce de résistance, roasted garlic and herb, Team Weber, for the win. Guys, I like to apply this liberally, and it is delish. You guys want to get yourself some of this for your next trout cookout because this, along with that salt, pepper, I'm going to add a little lemon in there, is just mwah. You will not be sorry. I guarantee it. Cook it down nice. I'm also going to throw a couple of lemon slices in there. Let those cook in with that butter in to that trout. Smelling delicious. I'm going to go ahead and flip that trout so I can get the seasonings on the other side as well. Like so. And more Team Weber. Roasted garlic and herb for the win. Delicious. Woohoo! Guys, looking delicious. Smelling even more delicious, sir. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can squeeze this lemon juice. There we go. Over the top of everything. Give it a little more zest. Almost done cooking. We'll flip it one more time. All right, gang, like a goober, I am shooting this all by hand because I forgot my tripod. So, sorry for the different angles. There, though, is the fish looking absolutely scrumptious. Guys, I'm excited to try this. We're gonna go ahead and dive right in. Nice piece of meat. Here we go, let's give it a try. Mm. Getting the lemon. I cannot recommend enough that garlic and herb seasoning, guys. It's a game changer, it really is. So check this out. I'm able to, once I take one side off, I can actually peel that whole skeleton right off. And then I'm just left with this big old nice slab of meat right here. Peel it right off, look at that. Mm. Mm. That's delicious uber delicious super fresh youtube fam i hope you guys get to go try some crawdad as bait for trout i'm telling you around here it's a surefire thing go root around in your river or your lake go find some and go pitch it out wherever you can find trout i think you will like the results hope you guys enjoyed today's video hope you enjoyed the recipe 
I will see you in the next one. Cheers.